All right, let's run through this together. This is today, 29th of October, 2024. Mysterious craters appearing in Siberia might finally be explained. Now, they did see these in 2014. And this was a Yamali or Yamani or something like that peninsula. And that's exactly, this is the same crater I talked to the Russians about. And I told them, I said, these little balls down here, these are blood vessels that are leaking. That's where the blood would have ran in. This is some kind of a, a artery or a, uh, a lung cavity. Now, no, I, I don't think I got that detailed with them. I just told them that it was biology. But you can see these little balls here, those balls are from from uh, where the little uh, blood vessels go in. Now, whether, like I say, whether that's alveoli or whatnot, I think they are alveoli because there's a ton of them around there. So this was the first one that popped up. So it says, um, would it make a sound if nobody was there? They're just making a joke out of it. But they sent a team out of um, United Kingdom and Spain, and they tra traced the source. Well, I know exactly what the source was. And this was Yamali or P Peninsula. Now. They first noticed the craters emerging in 2014 and encountered a hole in the peninsula in Siberia. And it was 30 feet across, 50 meters deep, surrounded by ejecta. So it was an exploder. It exploded. It, was just, it, didn't, it didn't come from nowhere. It popped out. Since then, many more of these holes have burst forth from the surface of that area. And chemical engineer... Anna Moraga from University of Cambridge says the massive amounts of methane it released could have a big impact on global warming. Not just there. It, the global warming feeds on itself. As if, if you unplug your, your freezer, you are going to have a hell of a lot of expansive gases because it, it just stuff warms up and as it does, it decomposes. Decomposition creates gases. There's just no other way to understand it. But you have to understand the Earth is a biological thing. Here's what they're saying. There are very, very specific conditions that allow this phenomenon to happen. No, there isn't. Well, yes, there is, and yes, there isn't. We're talking about a very niche geological space. No. We're talking about anywhere it warms up, this is going to happen. Where it was cold, these things were preserved, and they didn't decay. And I'm going to show you right now, before we go any further, because then I'm going to explain to you all of this, and you have to understand the chemistry, you have to understand about things being frozen, and about how they stay frozen, they just won't decay. But once they unfreeze, the case is closed, they rot, they expand, and, and then the ground explodes, because the ground is becoming softer as well. Everything is adding up to be a total disaster. I got to be honest with you, my friends, this is so shocking that I don't even know where to start. This is about sinkholes in Siberia. Now, this was from a year ago, and um, they took, all this is is a 30-second introduction to these exploding sinkholes that are all over Russia, and they started seeing them in 2014. And they're exploding gas and flames coming out of the Arctic. And I, I know all about this because I actually talked to the Russians back in 2014 when they started having there because I was the one that was commenting on sinkholes. and People weren't paying attention to them back then. And, um, and I was commenting on them and they found out about my research from a Japanese researcher. And, and who was researching sinkholes. And he, he claimed that, yes, Roger has the right idea. Talk to him. I talked to the Russians, and I explained to him why I felt this was biological and exploding sinkholes. Now, they were extremely polite. I don't know whether they thought I was crazy or not, but um, I did explain to them they're expl exploding because of actual biological decay, which these some of these creatures in the cold regions, they didn't turn into stone. Like my other ones, like the mud fossils, these turned into stone. These are not going to turn into methane. However, if this didn't turn into stone and it was frozen, which these things were in the, up in these Arctic, they're finding all kinds of 
creatures that are just frozen. And the gigantic ones, they don't even know to look at them. But they're gigantic and frozen, and that's where the methane is coming from. As they start to pull out all these fluids, and because it's getting warmer, the methane just builds up gases underneath these mats that were at one time very solidly frozen as the stuff is like in your, your freezer, the same stuff. It's, it's not giving off methane in your freezer. But if you put it out on a counter, the thing's going to swell up and blow up. Put a big plastic bag around something, and you see it'll blow up like a balloon. That's what's happening here. Now, what else is happening with the problem? This mat is getting soft. Before, it was a hard sheet of, of ice, basically. Now, it's, you know, sort of floppy. And all of a sudden, they pop. And that's what I told the Russians. I said, there's nothing you can do. I mean, it really, there is absolutely nothing you can do at this point. Because it's, it's not only, well, it's, it's every, and they're right about this climate change. It's us. We have caused this. Human activity has been the driver. And that's because our environment, our atmosphere is swelling tremendously. And as it swells, the atmosphere, the outer atmosphere, scrubs through the universe. It's just a fact. As we spin at 3,000 degrees out there at our ionosphere, nobody even talks about that. How come it's 3,000 degrees out there? Not a word about that. It's because it gets the atmosphere right out there is called the ionosphere. Ions are electrons. They're scrubbing the other electrons, which the whole universe is filled with. And I mean filled. They just don't understand climate change. They don't understand the heating of the environment because it's hot, then it's cold, then it's hot again at the surface. And that's when then the Earth has to absorb all that heat. So the hotter it gets out there, the hotter it gets on the surface. But in between, it gets cold as can be. It goes from 3,000 above zero to about 100 and something below zero in that dipole layer. So it's hot, cold as can be, and then hot again at the surface. And the Earth has to absorb that high heat. You know, they really had me scrubbed from the internet of all of the stuff that I did for years and years and years. If you look up Roger Spur, sinkholes, Mud Fossil University, put all any of that stuff in, you, you can't find me. It's just not there. And I have dozens of videos about this because I talked to the Russians in 2014 about these exploding sinkholes. And, and, and as I think I just explained to you, or I will, I understand exactly what's going on. And it's, it's a series of events related to global warming. It's just, no question about it. And extraction of fluids. Even the extraction of fluids is not is not really the main issue. It's the decomposition of biological things that are under the ground. And you say, no, they're not biological. Yes, they're absolutely biological. And that's what's creating the methane. And then that biological gas buildup explodes. Simple as that. But I have been banned from speaking about everything because of my discussion about the related to giants. So I put in chat GPT. I says, did I ever talk about sinkholes? And it says, yep. Did Roger Spur mention sinkholes? He says, mentioned sinkholes in some of his discussions, particularly within his exploration of geology and theories around unusual fossilization processes. Now, that is very telling. That's very important to understand. Unusual, correct. What happened was, in areas where it was warm, and they, they boiled the oceans, and the creatures cooked their body parts off and stabilized in the, the warm, hot, sila you know, silicon-rich oceans, and they turned into stone. And some of them, I mean, I got all, so much stuff here I showed all the time, some of them just turned like into regular just look like it's meat. The fascia is still there, all of the fibers, the meat, the color, everything. So it depends on the conditions, their unusual fossilization. Unusual, yes. So what would happen if this chunk of meat was frozen and it didn't get stabilized like this? What happened if it wasn't in that warm environment, in that cooking area where it, it stabilized by 
what's called nucleophilic invasion. What if it was so cold that there couldn't be any invasion? And that's what happens in a, in a, a freezer. In a freezer, there's no invasion because there's no, the, the molecules can't move. That's called nucleophilic invasion. Nucleophilic, nucleo, tiniest particles, nucleophilic invasion. They move in and they take over. Now sometimes, if it's the correct chemistry, it'll come in and they'll just turn to solid. They'll stabilize just exactly as they were. Sometimes they will take on mud and become mud stone because they're in mud. This was more in a fleshy, bloody area. And then it broke off. And you can see it's just a chunk of meat that broke off a bigger chunk of meat. So when it stabilized, it was big. And then, I don't know why it broke up, but it, it, now it's small, but it's just a piece of that bigger stabilized piece. Now, in the cold environment, they never turn to stone. And can I prove that? Yes, I absolutely can. So what did Roger Spur say about, he mentioned sinkholes. Spur theorized certain geological formations, including sinkholes, could be linked to his idea ancient biological remains. Yes. Giant body parts. Yes. Fossilization in unique ways over millions of years. No. They were not fossilized over millions of years. They were fossilized like that. So that's not correct. He suggests that some large geological depressions, such as sinkholes, could be remnants of decaying or decayed biological matter or ancient anatomical structures. Yes, they're all anatomical. Though this theory isn't widely accepted in mainstream science, of course not. His work is primarily in speculative guessing about geology and fossilization. No, there's no guesses here. I got DNA tests, I got CAT scans, I got specimens, I got blood, I got anatomy, I got chemistry, I got I, the, the, everything's done. His work is primarily speculative, so he often looks at traditional geological features with an alternative perspective. No, I look at them as what they are. I posit organic origins from many formations generally explained by standard geological processes. That's pretty, that, that covers it pretty good. The millions of years is wrong. This happened very quickly, and this was not that long ago. And it was because of a giant flood that boiled the oceans. Look up MIT. MIT says, yes, the oceans boiled. But they say it was three billion years ago. Where did he come up with that? I know what happened, and everything I have here, every single piece of the things that I show came right off the surface of the earth. Think about it, just give it a thought. The things I'm showing are on the surface of the earth. This, you just picked them up. The things that I'm showing are just picked up off the ground, basically. Now, some, one little thing that I, they dug to make a foundation, but it wasn't deep. It was just enough to put a footing in. And, and they piled up a little pile of stuff. And all of that stuff is from the Triassic. I have a Triassic footprint, which is human. I have a, a three foot wide, to, it goes three to four feet wide, a hand. And I have knuckles and fingers and all that stuff from that hand. That was DNA tested. Cat scanned the fingertips. No question, human, 100%. All the things I'm talking about, I cover 100%. But this is the idea. I understand. The giants were so enormous. These sinkholes, in a lot of cases, they were lung cavities, just like this. This is a lung. And these would be the sinkholes. And inside of there is a lot of blood and stuff that would fester and boil up and to turn into a lot of gases. Because the source of, of fossil fuels is blood primarily. The best is from blood. And the, these would be like on a surface and it would be covered with ice. And then as this warmed up, instead of being frozen like in your freezer, it would start to give off those gases. Just like I said, if you took a plastic bag and put it around let something rot inside of it, it's going to blow up the gases. It just happens. So underneath, it's going to be pushing harder and harder. As the top layer gets softer and softer, all of a sudden, pops up. That's what I told the Russians. I don't know if they thought I was nuts or not, but they were very, very polite. 
Well, okay, so let's see what the Russians have to say. I mean, what these have to say. Like I say, I talked to the Russians 2014, and it was exactly this crater. And they, there was 13 baby craters showed up right after this. And I told them, I said, there's going to be more and more and more. And they, there is more and more and more, and they are literally everywhere. But in the cold areas, they're exploding. And like I say, this is biology. I'm going to show you how when it warms up, the biology starts to take over and the gases start to get emitted. Okay, this is in Alaska. And I know exactly where this is. And I have studied this. And I know there's a place called Mount Spur, <laughs> which is my name, right near this. Now, these are interstitium enthesis balls. What that means is there was always a ton of little tiny fibers in here, which really don't hold up very well. But the balls are the anchors, and they're locked in the blood and tissue, and they're coated with blood and organic matter. And what do you see here? You see balls everywhere. You see them? And they all have this moss on them. Every one of them. Why? What else do you see? You see a bunch of ice. They're not in ice anymore. At one time, they were never out of the ice. You understand what I'm saying? This is now being, you know, melting off. And these are being exposed to a new temperature and the sunlight. And immediately, they start to grow on the blood that's in that, in that ball. These are the, the interstitium balls that are everywhere in the skin of creatures. The creature that this was from is so enormous that there's just no way for anybody in their right mind to even possibly consider this. All right? I am not in my right mind. <laughs> I, am, I, I am in my right mind, but everybody is not in their right mind. They're in somebody else's mind because they have to agree with what everybody else says. I don't agree. So I am in my mind, and I think it's right. So that's my point of view. Now, what's going to happen here? If you took a rubber bag, a plastic bag, and put it around that thing, it would grow like this. It would expand. There's going to be gases that are created in here as it does its work in nature. I believe somebody try it. Put a plastic bag around one of these. I haven't done it, but I know that it's going to expand, especially if this is if you just left this to rot. Now, growing, I would exp I would expect it to expand in a plastic bag. I should try that. Well, would somebody else do it? Plastic bags, they're everywhere. Don't let the kids get a hold of them. <laughs> now, that's what's going on. This stuff, if it was under the ground and warm enough that it started to decay, it would. the, the gases are going to accumulate. The methane gases, CH3, CH4, CH2, I think. They, all of the, the methanes, hydrocarbons, CHs. So that's my claim, is there would have been a mat on top of here, everything would have been fine if it stayed frozen forever, which it has been. We have so much global warming coming down now that the Earth has to absorb all that extra heat. And that is what's causing, it's just like forcing, putting a hair dryer in your freezer. It's going to cause decay. Decay causes expansion. Let me just show you something about space that just isn't understood. Space is not empty. It's absolutely, certainly, 100%, no question whatsoever, not empty. Nobody is saying that anymore. They understand that. But they will not allow for the speed of light to slow down going through all this debris and fields. 100% for certain it will slow down. This is our region in space, taken from a cell phone with an app that sees magnetic impulses, basically. I'm not sure how he did it, to be honest with you. It was a guy in uh, New Zealand. He doesn't want to be associated to this anymore for some reason, but because uh, I can't get through to him, so that's what I'm assuming. So 
um, but all these fields are from dipoles, which is my theory, dipole electron flood theory. Now, I have that one showing the fields all over and the moon and the blueness versus the other side of the moon. I understand that too. And uh, he also sent this one, which I think is Venus. And I can explain why I see them. But you can see they're all dipoles, black and white dipoles. And they have magnetic fields surrounding the dipoles. That's what a dipole does. It has big, huge magnetic fields surrounding it. Just the way it works. And that is my dipole electron flood theory. These are gigantic, but the tiniest dipoles are like this. And 1,823 of them, or, or well, 1,839, it's, it's in that area, make up one proton. But each one of them is virtually that right there. Each one of them is this. It's exactly what it is. It has a dark side and a white side. And it has a big field around it. It's just nothing more than that right there. 100% identical to that. <laughs> That's, they're all dipoles. See, they're all dipoles. Okay, we are a ball in space, a globe spinning around the sun, which is being dragged through the Milky Way on one of the arms of the Milky Way, such as this. We're going forward and we're spinning around that, and then it's, at the same time, we're spinning on our axis. This is well proven, so please don't argue with that here. You can argue that somewhere else, that's fine. Now, we're on one of these arms, we're spinning around here, and we're, oh, we're also spinning around as we spin around the sun. What does that mean? There's a lot of scrub. And what is the scrubbing? Well, the ionosphere, right out here. That's where the gases at our outside edge of our atmosphere scrub through all the gases in space, which are 100% saturated, 100%. 3,000 degrees out there. 3,000. Nobody talks about that. Why is it 3,000 out there? Why is it millions out here and 10,000 on the surface? I know exactly why. It's because the sun also has an atmosphere and it is clinging to its surface, scrubbing as it goes through. And it's being scraped off. And the same with ours. We're getting heated like hell on the side that the sun hits because all of that are particles. They're particles. There's no question they're particles. They know this now, and they're just, they, they, they don't know how to deal with it because nothing they have said is correct. Now, here's the, as I said before, the temperatures. This is the way outside. This is past our edge of our atmosphere, which is the ionosphere. See, ionosphere. This is outside, exo. It's not part of our atmosphere. Well, this atmosphere, though, does scrub right here. It scrubs and it creates nothing but ions, which are electrons. This layer appears to temperatures 1,500 degrees Celsius. That's almost 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. 3,000. Whoa. Then what happens? Then on the other side of the dipole is the coldest layer. How did that happen? 3,000 and then down to minus 80 which is, uh, I think, 112, <laughs> excuse me, below zero. That's a 3,000 degree difference between here and there. How is that possible? Well, it's because it's dipole. The hotter it gets here, the colder it will get here. And it is getting colder here. And it's getting hotter up here. Because the more we expand, the harder to scrub. The harder to scrub, the more heat. The more heat, the more cold. The more cold, the more heat. It gets hot cold, hot, and then the earth absorbs that heat, almost like it's a cold earth, but the earth is not cold anymore, it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter. So it's hot, cold, hot, and then the earth is supposed to absorb that, but it's too, it can't handle it. It's because we just ex expanded too much, too much, too much, too much scrub. And that's why it's so much turmoil. The, you know, the, the atmosphere is going crazy. And here's because of the scrub. All right, it used to be down here, let's say. And now it's way out here. And the scrub, rah, turmoil, all up in the, you know, in the polar areas. There's just this 
this flow going on. And these areas are the hot scrub areas. This is where you've got most of your scrub going on. This is spinning just a little bit. As these are 25,000 miles around every day. And these go around a few miles. <laughs> I was up in Alaska and it was the midnight sun. The sun was out at midnight because it was it doesn't spin at the same speed as the rest of the earth. That's why these are so hot down here. That's why you have your equatorial zones. And you can see, this is California. The sun is coming up from behind here. And you can see it's, it's doing something to the east coast of the United States, it looks like to me, really impacting and, you know, because the earth is spinning this direction. All right, California is in the dark, basically. And it's spinning this direction. And so the light is coming from that way and impacting here. So we're seeing into the light. This is the dark side of the Earth at this moment. Now, there's this extreme difference in temperature from where the sun is hitting and in the dark side of the sun, Earth. Very much difference. That's why some meteorites, meteor meteorites come through at night and they come through with the rotation of the earth so that they're going with the, the flow of everything and they're coming through at night they don't get cooked up a whole lot I have a couple of those here that didn't get cooked up anywhere near what they would have if they were coming against the flow and during the day they'd just be gone they just overcook and it, phew, that's where you see them all burning up in the, in the atmosphere you see this? I think I just showed you what it is. This is a scrub of the sun's atmosphere into the atmosphere of space. Well, the budget for some missions is studied, only some, of the sun's corona. NASA Heliophysics project cost of no more than 45 million. Muse mission, budget with 192 million. Parker Solar Probe, NASA cost 1.5 billion and this is to study the solar wind and you know what's coming off of the sun well they know what's coming off of it are the different types of molecules and they're the same types of molecules that are coming off of of um asteroid Bennu. virtually the same stuff same molecules coming out of the same atoms all right look it up space smells like steak the astronauts go on a spacewalk. When they come back in, they take their suits off. They smell the suits, and they smell like steak. It's saturated with steak smells, which are the smells of burning, combusting steak and metals. And that's what's coming out of here, out of these Dragon Balls. That's what I want you to look at. I'm going to try to explain it. It might be a little out of sync here. But um, what's coming out of there is when the sun hits it exactly right, and that's where these, that's, that is that, right there that was what I was just showing you right here that's 500 feet across and it's shooting out of here with just like a gas grill shoots out you know the smoke and um, these things are they're everywhere around the world so it's nothing special here to be perfectly honest with you but the what they need to do is to look at these balls now I'm going to show you the actual anatomical and some um, I don't know what I've shown you so far I gotta be honest with you I got pulled away here and uh, but it's gonna hopefully flow correctly but what we're gonna have to they're gonna have to look at these these balls not what's on the floor necessarily and I think they've taken some harvesting there but I would like to know what's in the ball and I would say there's gonna be some kind of biological fluid I mean I'm 100% I'm sure of that there's a guy standing looking down in there, and that's the original pictures of the first sinkholes in uh, in Russia, out in the peninsula. So, I don't know what else I can show you here, and don't forget, this is what you're going to be seeing in a moment, and looking at the, the true anatomy of everything that we're looking at. All right, so get ready. All right, here's what I want you to look at. You see this? endothelium right here and you see these little black balls what does the endothelium do and where is it located well first of all it's in the arteries 
it's in the center of the arteries. So if we were looking down these artery, we would see these little black balls. All right, here's the deal with the endothelium. It controls the passage of materials in and out of the bloodstream, those little black dots. It's a semi-permeable barrier. So it's, just, it's not just anything going in and out. It's semi-permeable. It only allows certain things. Now, the fluid and small molecule transfer, that's what it allows. Fluids and small solutes. Solutes just means they're in the solution they move passively across the endothelium, while big macromolecules, big ones, use either transcellular or paracellular pathways. Can we see those little balls inside these, what I'm saying are arteries, that are sinkholes? Yes, we can. There's the balls right there. There's those, those endothelium balls. And you see the little stripes coming down there? That's basically also internal in the, the artery. Let's just take another look at it. Remember the balls. All right, and these, these create the stripes. You see the little bumps around them? So if you were looking down there, you'd look out and see stripes and you'd see balls. Well, what do you see here? You see stripes and you see balls. Now that fluid is not blood. It's something other than blood, but I'm telling you, it contains all the hydrocarbons. I mean, all of your bodily fluids are primarily hydrocarbons in, in several different stages. And I can show you that because they took samples of Comet 67P, which I also show, I'll show you right now, no question whatsoever, 100% certainty, that's biology, and it had the hydrocarbons and all the other molecules that blood has. This is very, very certain as far as I'm concerned. I think this was a picture that the Russians sent me. I don't, I can't say that for sure, but I don't think this was like a published picture. Um, so I don't know. But I can tell you one thing, this is exploded outwards. Now, if they were to surf, slick this back, they should be able to see the layers of artery there, I would think. Because we, just think about this, there's the balls, there's the slits. Now, if they did what I did with the one I have here, this giant artery here, I polished one of the pieces, and you can see all the different layers all the way up to the inside where the blood is. Now, I don't think there's any reason they shouldn't be able to see that. They take some bulldozers out there and move all this stuff back. I think they're going to see those same layers. I'm not kidding you. It's just but biology's biology. And there's layers all over the earth. They can't account for any of that stuff. Oh, they must have taken millions of years to layer, 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 layer. No. There's layers and layers and layers and layers of biology. Now here's one where the methane's caught on fire, and this is, I think this has been burning for like 30 years. You see this? You see that covering there? You see this here? This is not just accidental. This is like the skin over the top of some muscle or something. But it could have been, uh, you know, right here where you see, right on the edge or all the way around, that's where it's burning. That's where the membrane was. That's where the membranes are. So I don't know what this is, but I can tell you what, it's biology. And they, you know, they, they have these kind right here, you have the holes like this, but you also have holes like this, hold on, like a bone. It's the same sort of stuff, you might have a bone like that laying there, where it's degrading now and blowing out gases through that hole, and it's laying there like this, and the gases are on fire. I can't say that's not true. But it's going to be biology, there's no question about it. It's been burning for 30 years. And there's, a, and there's not, not just one of those around. And like I say, blood breaks down. Now I'm going to show you some meteorites and comets. Well, let me show you comet 67P, it's undeniable. Plus, Benue, they went out and took a sample and brought it back, it's a heart. 
You know, when I say I do my homework, it's true. I'm not just bragging because I'm bragging. I might be bragging, but it's I do my homework. Now, what is my homework? Well, I say everything's biology. They actually had a lander go out to this comet. It's called Comet 67P. This goes back to 2015. I believe it was 2015. Well, I know it was. And, um, and I followed this right from the dates they went out there, and I knew exactly what it was they were landing on. And this is what they were landing on right here, comma 67P. This, my friends, is a hip joint. Oh, come on, Roger. Yes, it's a hip joint. And here is what a hip joint looks like in a, a normal hip type thing. See that right there? This is it right here. And somebody helped me out with the fistus today, which is the tip of the head of the, the long bone. Now, you see this is the long bone and the hip joint right here. It broke somewhere right over here, ours. Normally they break somewhere up in here like this, but I think ours broke right down about here. Let's go back and look at it again. There's the head and there's the neck coming back. All right, you see, here's the neck and here. I believe that's where we are, some over here. So normally they break up in here or they fracture over in here, but this snipped right off here for some reason, but, but you know, there were battles in the heavens. Now, what else is about, how big is this thing? No. To give you a size relationship, that's Raleigh, North Carolina, downtown. And um, that's <laughs> 67P. It's good size, you know, full grown, as they would say. And that's just that hip joint bone. Now, it has to have blood, right? Everything's got blood. Well, where would the blood be? Well, here's where the blood would be right here boiling out of that artery. That's an artery. The reason it's boiling out of here is because the sun is hitting it directly into the into the blood. Into the, not necessarily blood, but it's the, the fluids that are down inside that artery. I, I, I'm saying there's going to be a lot of blood too, but it'll be a lot of fluids as well. And it's shooting straight out into space. It's not just blowing off the surface. And it's because the sun is hitting it, it's cooking it, it's literally cooking it, and there's not enough oxygen for it to combust, so it just goes, vaporizes. Same thing here. Well, why are these little bitty ones and going this way and that way and this way and that way and all over different ways? It's not just blowing off. These are being cooked as well, but they're the tiny little blood vessels. This gets serviced, and then all of the little blood vessels go here. Or actually, I guess if the blood would be coming down, and all of the little blood vessels would be coming back up. Something like that. But they're the little tiny blood vessels, that's the artery, that's the key. You got a big one supplying the little ones, and these are boiling off just like that. This isn't b cooking. That's not cooking. Only where there's blood, and where there's blood, there's tubes, and the tubes are shooting into the direction where the tube is pointed. This is back from February 2015. That's 10 years ago almost. See, here's, here's the Russians endothelium balls out on their peninsula, and here they are in 67P. They call them dragon balls. These little balls here, those are all the same things. Those are the uh, endothelium balls. And that thing is 500 feet across. 40 millimeters is this wide. I, I, it's about four of them across there. It's about 500 feet across. That's just the artery, 500 foot artery. Blowing off gas is like unbelievable. But we have them here on Earth. Now this, I, this is not 500 feet across. This is the guy. I think it was 32 feet, something like that, 50 feet, something, I can't remember. Um, anyway, and they do burn because, it, and primarily right at the, the uh, membranes. Because the membranes are the fluid-filled highways. They're bringing the fluids up to be burned. You know, not, not, necessarily, not necessarily fluids, but the gases for sure. Now, and, and there's, they're all over the place, these uh, sinkholes. You see that leading off to that? That's some kind of biology. That's not just an accidental sinkhole. Something was leading over to here. What it was, I have no idea. 
But I like looking at this stuff, trying to figure it out. And I think I got most of it figured out. And again, the things in space, they're not just chunks of nothing. They're biology. Right now, I haven't found anything that's not biological. Not only that, when they landed on here, I followed this thing as close as the people in their mission. It was called the European Space Agency, the Philae Lander. Now, they had a couple of spots they were going to land in. These spots here, a backup spot and so forth. I don't, I don't really got to be honest with you, I don't know where they ended up landing. But they landed on there and they took samples. All right, and they called it uh, Juliet and Kenneth. Here's what they found. Hydrocarbons. You see this? CH2, 3, CH plus, CH4s, CH3s. Hydro, I mean, iron, all the different states of iron that are in your blood. All of these carbon, hydrogen, sodium, silicon, all, 100% was biology. And they said yes. As far as they could determine, it's, it's um, biological. So <laughs> what are you going to take away from that? And then they just sort of, that's it, enough of that. Well, not for me. I want to know what we're looking at. And I know what we're looking at. I can tell you exactly what we're looking at because I know, because I look. This is tendon. You see these straps? Those are tendons. You see this little circle right here? I believe that's either another bundle of tendon, a rope tendon, or it is muscle fibers. It could be either one. And I think might be probably muscle because there's so much red blood around here. You see that? All that that's nothing more than um, um, blood cells. That's just like blood dusting out of here. And tendon does not have blood. There's almost no blood whatsoever. So it looks to me like that blood is coming out of this mu muscle fiber. And they do have a bundle of muscles coming if it's a hip joint, which it certainly looks like. I'm not saying it's human. I don't know what it is. But you, there, is, there is muscle, and it's attached, and then there's tendon, and you know, there's a bunch of stuff going on in there. But I think it broke off somewhere right up about here. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's what it is. And that's where the blood was running. And again, they could plow that down and, <laughs> you know, scrape this off and see, just like I did with the, the artery I had. I couldn't see the one I got. Look, look at this. Where is it? Where'd you go, artery? Here it is. As a matter of fact, this isn't the side. The other side is where I, I uh, polished it. And I polished it down to here. It's not perfectly polished, but it was enough so I could see I mean, I can see that it's so perfectly. It's just unbelievable. All the layers perfectly. I mean, flawlessly. But it's still very grainy because it's, it was um, highly transitioned. But this side, you really can't see that until you polish it down. So they would have to get it nice and slick down to look and see, do they have that? If they have, it's an artery. If they don't have that, it could be from... Um, a long alveoli. But those, I can tell what they are too, but they have to get down and smooth it out so where they can see around it and see what the biology is as it enters that tube. That's what you need to see. Just looking down in the tube, that's fine. But And I can tell that too because I understand what I'm looking at. Because I can see the, uh, the bumps. Those bumps aren't there for nothing. Those bumps are fluids that are coming out and freezing. I mean, just think about what you're seeing. And all these little lines here, it's exactly identical to what an artery looks like. Now, all the tissue in your body has blood flowing through it everywhere, or lymph specifically. Lymph is more, there's more lymph in your body than there is blood. I believe it's four times as much lymph fluid, which I believe this is what this is, than is blood, because that's not actual blood. If they were to break these balls off and check them out, I'll bet you they'd find out there was lymphatic fluid in there. It's going to be a lot of enzymes, 
some bacterias. There's going to be all kinds of stuff coming out of these that hasn't been released on the earth in thousands of years. Because this was frozen at the time of the great destruction on earth. And that was approximately 3,700 years ago. And that's when this stuff was frozen. That's my belief. And don't forget, it's all right at the surface of the earth. This is not buried a bazillion miles down and we got to go down. It's right here. It's right, right there. So if that's a lung, here it is right here on the surface. All right. If it's an artery, here it is right on the surface. This stuff is eroded away from the top of it. We got a lot of thinking to do because, I, I mean, I have the evidence. There's no, nobody can deny the evidence that I have. It's undeniable. So it, until it's looked at, well, it's just people walking around in circles and just refusing to think. And that's what I have found. Fifteen years. Absolutely stunned me. Stunned me that that is the state of the human mind. <laughs> so don't forget, the endothelium is just what we're looking at. Fluids and small solutes move passively across the endothelium while macromolecules use a different route. So what are we going to be looking at? We're going to be looking at the passive, it's a small fluids and solutes that are in body fluids, really lymph fluids. That's what I would look at. Does it compare to lymph fluids? All you got to do is chip a couple of those balls off and do some chemistry. All right, this is when I talked to the Russians. It was somewhere in 2014, because they, they were urgent trying to figure out what the hell is going on. And this is, was, it was this peninsula here. And um, this was, they had like 13 new baby craters were popping up shortly after I talked to them. But um, more mysterious craters found in northern Russia in February 2015. And um, now they're talking about six days ago, the study finds craters come from forceful release of methane gas. Yes, whether it underground is, is melting and, um, and, and flying out. And as it does, the surface weakens up so it's easily popped and the pressure gets more and more because the stuff is rotting under the surface, which it never was before. It was frozen solid. You keep something frozen solid, it stays there almost forever. Once you st let it get warm, it rots, it, it expands, and you get all that stuff. Now, your new explanation for Siberia's mystery craters. This was from March 2015. Now, I got to look and see what they said, but by this time, I had already discussed it with them. Because I talked to them almost right away after they started having this trouble. So I don't know what this is. Scientists captured, ooh, this is back from November 2014. That's one of the earliest ones, I think. Well, uh, this is 2024. I got to look into this one here. Anyway, this is what these... <laughs> I'm showing you what they are. If, if you don't see what they are, I can't help you. And they can tell you, I can tell you right now, if they did an analysis on those fluids, they're going to find out those are not just water accumulating there. That's some kind of a biological fluid still in that creature. You know, they, they, they don't just, there's just nothing ever there anymore. You go into all these caves and stuff, and you see all these stalactites and stalagmites and all of these different formations and flows of things like that. Those are all from enzymes. That's all from bodily enzymes breaking down things and then they reform into these like almost like waxy looking things. That's, that's chemistry, my friend, from biology. It, it, there's nothing but biology. I don't care what anybody says anymore. And we have the, the proof right now here on Earth, Benu is a heart, case closed. Closed, 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 sealed, stamped, folded, boxed, nailed, stapled, <laughs> and cryogenically sealed. You know, this, this case is closed on that, and all of this stuff tough too. You don't look, you're never going to see, and that's what we got now is we got closed eyes, closed minds, and um, I'm finding we got a lot of hard hearts. 
against something, and I'm not sure what they're against at this point anymore. You know, to be able to deny reality because you feel like, you know, you never felt like you got to feel religious now or something. No, just feel any way you want. Just deal with reality. I don't care what you feel. You know, I have my own feelings, but I, that's, that's, I'm not going to impress them on you. I'm gonna, I'm, I might tell you what they are, and I, I do. I don't hide them. But you can believe anything your little heart desires. That's what free will is. You know what free will is? It means you can do anything you want, good, bad, or indifferent. It's up to you. And then you have to make and live your life according to that, however you want to deal with that. And then, in my opinion right now, you're going to have to deal with that in your afterlife too. And, um, and this is a wake-up call to everybody. And if you hear these words, you better just turn yourself around. If you've been doing anything you shouldn't be doing, you better just stop doing it. <laughs> I'm just telling you. That's my feeling, so that's my feeling. Now, next case. Um, because if all the things they said in the ancient texts are true, and I believe now, I'm, I, I can't, the battles in the heavens, giant creatures, they said they looked up in the skies at people by battling in the heavens, giants. This was written down in the ancient texts. A hundred percent of the world had these same stories. Giants, dragons, monsters, battles in the heavens, giant creatures fighting, throwing, cutting, blowing each other up, flying around everywhere. <laughs> Gods. Every single one, a hundred percent. Not one single culture didn't have that same, same, same basic foundational story. After that, you know, everybody's going to twist and just turn into all these little gyrations with their story. And over the course of a few thousand years, well, of course, the stories change. And then they discard all the ones that they say nobody would ever believe, like Enoch and Jubilees and Roger Spur <laughs> and Velikovsky. They just throw them in the woods. Velikovsky wouldn't even be known now, and he's still not known except for the book I wrote about him, that, you know, he, he, he did the research to show these what they wrote about. I did the research to show, yes, what they wrote about is true. It's here. The evidence is here. It's not unsupported anymore. So between Velikovsky and me and his history, it's closed. The case, she is sealed. You know, this goes back to 2014. You know, I never mentioned anything about collecting samples or any of that stuff, but they did go there. And this says the scientists captured images inside this crater. So they go down inside this crater. This is November 2014. They go way down to the bottom of the crater. See, I'm standing here. You see all those? That's where those little balls are coming out. This is all biology and that's all they need to do is collect some of these balls right off the wall now they did collect surfaces collected samples for further analysis they went to the bottom they examined a frozen lake extends down another 10.5 meters which is 34 feet below this icy surface and that's going to be you know who knows what kind of fluids but what they want to do is collect the balls they collected samples, I don't know from where, but um, it's just they're not clear what exactly caused the three craters to form. Some scientists have theorized the methane gas released due to climate change might have caused the frozen Siberian permafrost collapse, which, yes, it's, it's that. It's, there's not much that we can do now. It's because the, the creatures that make up Underneath these frozen lands that were frozen and entombed these creatures and they did not rot, they did not turn into gases and and which right now they're like spontaneous combustion almost. So that's just what's going on right now. The warmer it gets, the more they're gonna release the methane. The more they release the methane, the more these explosions are gonna happen. You see this? This is the European Geosciences Union, the leading organization for Earth planetary space sciences research in Europe. This goes back to 2014. There's nobody paying attention to it. 
more incredible, incredible pictures. This is when they found that, that crater, which I just showed you, and that, that was sent to me, I think, back at this time by the Russians. They said, what do you think about this? And I said, and I talked to the guy, I actually talked to a Russian about it, and this is it. That's all they had. 2014, cases closed, forget about it, move on. I'd like to have some conversation with these people. If they're the leading planetary and space science research in Europe, I'd, I'd like to talk to them. Maybe they'd be willing to talk. All right, let's see what happens. I know nothing's going to happen, but I'm posting on their page. I say that is biology. Mud Fossil University has details on YouTube of these things. And this is Comet 67P. It's a hip joint. There is nothing but biology. And Bennu is a heart. Reply. Boom. This is the chemistry that shows what that heart is, or I mean what the hip joint is constructed of, which is all biology, hydrocarbons all over the place, iron, different states of iron, which is blood. Here's what it looks like. It's a hip joint. And here's where the blood's blowing out all over the place. So, you know, if they're the leading, you know, they claim to be the leading um, planetary space science research center, I'd like them to do a little research on this, see if what I'm saying makes any sense. That's all I'm asking for. I'm not asking for somebody to just blindly accept it. But, you know, they've got four... Well, I guess they've got nothing there. <laughs> well, 29 reposts, 7 likes. I give them a like. And, you know, what can I say? Ten years ago. Okay, I'm going to close it up with this because I, I started showing that everything there is in space is biology. The Earth is completely, it's nothing but biology. They can't get their minds around this. They're never going to stop this meth methane release in the frozen areas because now those bodies are starting to decay and they're going to have a ton of methane releases. Nothing you can do about it. But I did show that Bennu, this heart in space, is a heart. The plumbing comes right off the top. And the same as Psyche, it's another heart. And they just spent $1.16 billion to go out and get a sample of this heart. And they brought it back, and it is a heart, and it is muscle. That's heart muscle right there. That's what a heart sarcomere is, heart muscle. And it's flanked by a top layer of membrane, which is phosphates, and a lower member membrane, which is phosphates. Total surprise. They call this the phosphate surprise. No idea it would be there. And they're membranes to coat the top and bottom of the sarcomere, just like this heart attack victim. That's a heart attack that ripped. It's supposed to be like that. They're the sarcomeres. And they have a layer on the top and a layer on the bottom of phosphates. And then they have the sarcomere in the middle that block the pinches. If you can't see the what we're talking about here, plus the chemistry is identical and the phosphates are from phospholipid layers. It's just There's no possible way that it's not what it is. Plus, I mean, just to look at it, any anatomist looking at it, they can't, they can't deny that. They can't deny it. And when you understand how the plumbing here works, it just pops right off. I mean, literally pops right off. And that's how they do a hard bypass. Uh, I think it's a bypass. They, they just pretty much, they can just lift it right off the top. This stuff comes right off down to the valves. And in, in almost all the mud fossils, you end up with this down here. Just like this and just like that. This psyche got too close to the sun or somewhere where it heated it up enough to smelt it, which is about 2,700, 3,000 degrees, something like that. Bennu never did. So it's still got its sarcomeres fully intact, which uh, there they are. Let's see right there. There is no denying this. Any anatomy 
person. They must have somebody there at University of Arizona that can understand what they're looking at. I've been trying over and over for the last year to try to get through it, and nobody will con contact you back. I've tried, and they say, oh, we want to give these samples to everybody. No, they don't. They, they, they want to just study them for years. That's my op opinion. I can't get anybody to talk to me. And the, the, those sarcomeres are these sarcomeres. There's just no difference. And the layers of phosphates are these layers of phosphates. There's no difference. And it's a heart, is a heart, and there is no difference. I mean, when something is something, is something. You can't just turn away and say, oh, that's too much for me to take, handle. I know it's too much for anybody to handle, basically, to be honest with you, but once you start to realize we live in a biological universe, it's just nothing but biology. That's biology, that's a boiling off artery. Well, not boiling, but it's smoking off, it's like infrared range cooking. Same thing here, they're hitting it right into those little blood vessels and they're squirting out where it at two points. There is nothing hard here to understand, and it goes back 10 years. And, you know, like I say, I am not a quiet guy. I've been pushing this and pushing this and pushing this. And Avi Loeb talking about this being possibly a spaceship and, to, and testifying before the Senate or somewhere, saying we could be invaded by aliens in a spaceship. No, it's not. It's a finger. And that's grip skin, which is the, the uh, heavy-duty skin at the tip of the finger. That's an apical tuft. That's a tendon runs right down. And this is the investment right at the end of the, the bone where all the little fibers invest. That's the, the uh, joint right there. Then it starts over again, goes down to here. This goes right over the top of the knuckle right here. And this is where the tendons go right over the top. Vein, artery. That's a finger. These things in space are what they are. I'm sorry, in the ancient texts, they say they battled in the heavens. They were, they were talking about actual real creatures, and this is actual real body parts. I, I'm sorry, that's just a fact. And the same thing on Earth. These are mochi marbles. Those are the same things that are on Mars. They call them the Mars blueberries. And they're the same things that are here, coming out of the side of Huntington Beach, the cliffs. As that erodes away, these balls, which are the same as these balls, are coming down here. This is nothing more than the mud, which is the red stuff eroding away, and that is skin. This is what we got, and in the body of a creature, it's like this, and if you looked at it real close, there they are, there's all those balls. It's just the same as this right here. Once it erodes and everything washes away, you end up with just those balls. And I showed you the red, the green mice up in Alaska. I know I did somewhere, but maybe not even in this one. But they, the green mice are up in Alaska. They're all over the place because the Alaska's thawing out and the balls are still completely saturated with a, a dense red blood. And the, the green moss is growing just like fabulously on those balls. And then eventually it will consume the ball, the, the, the edible stuff, and, that'll be a, and then they'll be down to just like little stones, just like that. So, mes amis, with all the evidence, we are being just taken for a ride, my friends. You cannot dispute this evidence. The evidence is material, substantial. You know, I, I have DNA tests and CAT scans and specimens and blood and all kinds of different tissues. All this stuff is verifiable, and it has been verified. I even did chemistry on 67P, and here it is right here. Hydrocarbons, that's, that's cooking off gases. The, the blood, iron oxides, the same iron oxides that are in your blood. And they agreed. But what are they going to do? It's too much for the average person to accept. But if you look at it, and you, any, you know, you can't deny this stuff. It's not deniable. If you're an anatomist, and I've shown this to people that are some of the top anatomists and autopsy people in the world, nobody put up a fight about it. Nobody wanted to become, wants to be in the middle of it because they end up looking like an idiot because people say, "Oh, your guy's crazy. He's nuts." That guy's got to be insane talking about this stuff. Oh, this guy's crazy. This thing's, I don't know how big it is. It's big. <laughs> I showed how big it is. It's on top of Raleigh, North Carolina right there. 
like I say, it'd be a bad day to be in Raleigh if that thing came down. And I don't think it would just fluffy and settle right down like that. So these are the kind of the size and the, 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 the um, chemistry and the biology and uh, it is what it is. And the ancient texts were not kidding around. So when I see that, then I go from there forward. And I say, well, what does that mean? And then what does it mean? What does it mean? Then you get down to Christ. What about Christ? What does that mean? All right? That's what everybody wants to know now. What, is, what about Christ? And what about God? What about the eternity? It's time to consider those things. We have never been even allowed to consider them. If you started talking about that stuff it, it, openly like it was reality, you, people think you're crazy. And I did too. I thought I, they were all... I, did, I had very... I, I didn't think much of people that had a religious convictions. I just thought they were, they were weak-minded and, and couldn't deal with reality. And um, because I didn't see any reality. I didn't see any material evidence. I didn't see any of this stuff. But then all of a sudden one day... It popped on me just like pulling a cork on a bottle, and it just flowed. And it has flown every day since. And that was over 10 years ago. And I've talked about this a number of times. I got messages. I don't, I'm just telling you. I, believe me, I'm nobody special, and I, I'm the last person in the world to represent God. But <laughs> something happened. So go look in the woods. I went to the woods. I found the giants. I came back, I'm typing in, looking for giants, and it came up, it says, these things are for you to see and for others as a test. Freaked me out. The message went away, never came back. I can't find anywhere in the world that that message exists. About five years later, I'm sitting here depressed because I can't give the test. I've been laughed at and been exiled from virtually everywhere. Shut off, cut cut down, just basically destroyed. My research was totally gone because of attacks from everybody. And, you know, it was on both sides. The people that love God hated me because I was showing things that they thought made God look like, you know, these, these, these things in space, they couldn't, you know, they couldn't deal with them. And the people that didn't want this for scientific reasons because it shows everything they were saying was wrong. So hey, I'm stuck in the middle and everybody's treating me like I'm an insane person. And I'm, I'm not kidding you. I have had people saying that, you know, the VA will pay for for counseling or, or whatever. If you're a veteran, you can go get counseling for free. I said, what are you, what, what, can't you deal with reality? This is when I started getting upset and then I started getting really nasty and I got bitter. And I still got a lot of that bottled up. I'm trying to keep it bottled up because it's, it, it doesn't help. You get bitter, you get nasty. It just never helped. All it did was dig me deeper and deeper away from civilization. You know, and, and right now I'm talking about civilization. It's, it's, there's no civilization anymore. <laughs> People are just lost. They just walk around following the guy that has the nicest graphics or whatever. It's, um, I go for the, the actual factual evidence. And if that's not what you do, well, I don't know, you know, how you base your reality on just somebody saying something. If they can't support it with material evidence, it's, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't work. Now, Velikovsky had the material evidence of the texts from these times. And when I looked at them, I, you know, uh, yeah, it was just too spectacular, really, to, to, to embrace easily. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I don't dismiss anything. But when I started to find this stuff, it was all over. I mean, it's just the case is closed. It was all true. There's no possible way you can deny it now. It's just undeniable. So where does that put us? In a whole new realm. New study reveals eating pistachios could improve your eye health in just six weeks. Okay, why not? Let's look into some burning craters. I think that thing's been burning like 30 years. All right, uh, enough of this. It's a ramble at this point. I've, taught, I've shown you everything I can show you. And um, global warming is not understood. 3,000 degrees out here minus a hundred and something just below and then it warms back up again on the surface. How do you explain that? Have them explain it. 
1,500 degrees Celsius, that's 2,700, minus 80 degrees Celsius right next to it. That's minus 100. And then it goes back up to warm again, and then the Earth is supposed to absorb that. I think I just went over this. I can't go over it too many times because nobody listens. So I'm just going to keep doing what I've been doing, going over and over and over until somebody stops and says, you know, let's pay attention to this guy. He's not a nutcase, which I am labeled as a nutcase. I'm off of every grid, and I am. my emails go out as spam or suspicious or dangerous. I've had all that stuff. And um, I'm pretty much blocked in most places because, you know, you, you make one mention of this stuff and trip, the guy's a nutcase, get rid of him. So, now we're going to, the human nervous system and cranial nerves, we're going to look into this. This is very cool. Very cool. Because, you, you, you know, and they're talking about nerve, eh, I get carried away with this stuff, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, you know, I, I can't help myself. There's so much to look into, and nobody does. They skim the surface of it. They don't really understand anything they're doing. Biology, medicine, totally lost. They're just throwing something at the wall and hoping it'll fix something. At this point, that's about all it is anymore. And I think I understand it because of this layer right here which is something I discovered was the interstitium, this fluid-filled highway, which I believe has all the enzymes and bacteria and all the, this is the membrane layer, basically, that is, is above, just above the membrane. So what it does is it has the chemistry in there to repel anything that shouldn't be invading your membranes. Good stuff, yeah, you want the good stuff to go through the membrane. You gotta go in and out with good stuff, bad stuff. However, it's very selective. This fluid-filled highway, has all the attackers and the guys that break down the food, they do all the digestion using the enzymes and half-lives of the particles, and then they transmit it back and forth through the membranes. But without the right enzymes in here, you get bad stuff. And the bad stuff can get through the, end, the membrane. If it does, then it starts growing in here, the, the bacteria and thing that shouldn't be growing down here. It might be fine being out here, because you're going to have to have flesh-eating bacteria. You're going to have to have it because your your bacteria, your flesh is dying. What are you going to do with it? you got to clean it up. Something's going to have to go and chew it up. So you you got things that you don't want to be in here with the good stuff, but out there it's okay. Some, there's a lot of chemistry in the body that just is so not understood. It's just incredible. And what we first thing we need is a database of the entire body and what bacteria lives where. And we also need to know in which organ what fluids are in there because there's 200, types, 200 or so types of cancer and every one of them is related to a tissue type or an organ. That means it's sequestered in a certain type of chemistry. That means if we can understand that chemistry and why something got through there, maybe that could help in medicine. These things don't exist. After all this time, billions and trillions of dollars spent feeding money out of one right after the other, they don't even understand the human microbiome and the microvirome, which is where all of this chemistry is made, the enzymes. You don't have the enzymes, you're done. Enzymes come from ribosomes. Ribosomes come from bacteria. Bacteria lives in that layer, and they're single cell, and they squirt out these little ribosomes. They float all around your body, and those are the things that do the chemistry, and they do it fast. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. I know I went off on another tangent. Like I say, there's so much to talk about is so wrong. I, I get caught up in these little vortexes of change and talk, what I'm talking about, I call them a ramble, but you, there's nothing you can do. As you hit a little, another little spot that's wrong, you can't just glaze, glass over it. You're going to have to discuss it a little bit at least. So that's what I do. All right, I love you all. I'm hoping we can pay some attention to this and get off of this nonsense that they've been doing with science. They're not paying attention to what they should be attention to. And these are the people who work for you and me, my friends. And we pay them. And we pay them a significant amount of money. Billions and billions and billions of dollars when that money is well needed for disaster relief and everything else. 
And a lot of that is caused by by human activity, which is because they don't understand what they're doing and they refuse to understand what they're doing. I, I know, it's, it's, it just keeps going down. Or the sewer gets deeper and deeper. I, I don't know what to say. But I guess I've stopped saying what I'm saying for the next 10 minutes. <laughs> but I am not going to stop. Somebody's going to have to step up and say, let's take a look at this stuff. Let's see what we're really going on. But it's going to take somebody in Congress, or senators, or something. And once you get, they get in control, they're done. And these, these colleges and universities, they own us right now. They actually own you. If you don't do what they tell you to do, they fail you and to keep your money and, and tell people you're stupid because you wouldn't repeat what they told you to repeat. And if, and if you ra raise your voice about virtually anything, you're going to be in trouble. And that's what, tried, they, they, that's what happened to me. Only I won. Because I knew more than what the professor knew. And I said to him, I said, you're going to have to beat me in this. And he said, OK, I'll give you a. <laughs> so, you know, you, you, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough, tough world out there, my friends, especially when you get in academia. All they're worried about is getting ahead. It doesn't seem to matter how they do it. That's what I found. It doesn't matter if it's take somebody else's work, claim it as your own or just deny everything that, that shows that you're wrong, never engage with anybody that has any evidence that supports something that you don't endorse, force them to take books off the bookshelves like they did to Velikovsky, number one for 11 weeks in a row on the New York Times bestseller list, 11 weeks in a row, and the academics forced the publisher to pull the books off the shelves and they said if they didn't do that they'd never buy any more books from them and it was Macmillan and they caved in and they took the books off the shelves from Velikovsky and then of course they they said oh look they even had to retract all his books because he was an idiot you know, and then they turned it around you know what I mean it's a it's a real it's a they are tough tough people to deal with and they have I, I see they have no moral conscience whatsoever that I can find None. I have, I, and I dealt with lots of them, lots of them, lots of them, because I've been trying to get this information understood, or at least looked into. I don't care if they accept it or not. I really don't. If they can put a, a, a reason why I was wrong, well, let's go. But to not pay attention to DNA and CAT scans and specimens and the evidence like this, and then to have this stuff from Benue after paying over a billion dollars, and then just saying, oh, we need years to study this stuff because we need billions more to look into what Roger's talking about. No, they won't talk about Roger ever. I saw a thing say, yeah, within the next couple of years, we should know something about this. I said, what? I was said before they even came back over a year ago. I said, I know what it is. It's a heart. You know, I didn't expect to see the sarcomeres. I got to be honest with you. That that one freaked me out, and the and the membranes. I just thought they were going to come back with blood. But inside here, this is nothing but blood too. Sarcomeres is just not. It's saturated with blood. And the phosphates are the membranes. They know, there's no denying it. <sighs> if you got somebody that can get something done and fix this mess we're in. Because right now it's just like feeding money to pig people that I was going to say pigs, but I didn't, I didn't mean to. But I, it just came out of my mouth. <laughs> oh man, I'm not kidding you. I didn't mean to say that, but it's true. They're just taking money and, and wallowing in the in the neutrinos. <laughs> Uh, not understanding what they see, a geologist, it's, it's hilarious. It's absolutely hilarious now to see their explanations. If you go to Myron Cook and see his explanations of things, it's, it's just stunningly hilarious. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> Myron, yeah, and I, I, I try to get a hold of Myron and I, all I got back from him is we have nothing to speak about. <laughs> I can't get through to anybody. Nobody will talk to me. I get too much evidence. Anyway, God bless you all. Thank you. I love you. Now, this just came in, too. This just came in this morning. 
Dear Roger Spur, we're pleased to announce the University of Tokyo launched a new course titled Contemporary Garden City Concept for Asia, which is they're going to start making these urban gardens everywhere where, you know, and they can share and swap food. I think this is what they're talking about. Because I saw another thing this morning on the CBS News that said they're, they're called um, Swap LA or something. And there are all these little people's, you know, yards. They're going to turn into little gardens in LA, in Los Angeles. And then they're going to swap food between each other, neighbors. And so one right grow pumpkins and the right grow squash, whatever. And, you know, and they bring the communities together. Very, very outstanding idea. And uh, Michael Tollinger has one there. I was, I was with him the other day talking on a Zoom between me and him private. And um, he's got one small town initiative, very similar. And I think I might have already talked about it, or will. It's about sharing things and community and so forth. Anyway, um, this is why I get all of this. I can go to all these co courses and I can see what they say and I can make my statements back and forth. And I talk with them, but it never goes any further. But anyway, I went to uh, University of uh, to Tokyo, was it? Yeah, University of Tokyo. I went there, and once you go somewhere, they keep contacting you. Look at this. The course is available in both Japanese and English, and it's free for everyone at all times. You want to go to any of these courses. Now, this is going to be interesting, this contemporary Garden City concept. I would like to see them sharing tools and equipment and, you know, log splitters, and, you know, everybody can, you know, it's sort of like a commune almost. And everybody grows their own stuff in their own little, and everybody shares. Anyway, something like that. And uh, but this is also this is all free too. Big bang to dark energy. I'm going of course going to take that. <laughs> you you take them. You don't get any credit for it. But who cares? I want to see what they're saying. And this is all the things that they're just talking about right now. Global health policy. You know. This is going to be good, adapting climate change, big bang. And they know what you like, too. They, they, they um, somehow know what you're talking about and doing. Because they always come up with something that I like. <laughs>